We're always breathing. We're always, our hearts are ticking, no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing. And having the ability to monitor ourselves in a continuous fashion will probably be one of the biggest things that will change how medicine is managed, how healthcare is managed. So it started about 10 years ago um, in the med surge floor, basically, um, at Dartmouth Hitchcock. They were the first hospital that deployed patient safety net. They brought remote patient monitoring to the general floor so that any patient on the general floor that was administered any type of opioid in the hospital was now being monitored. The patient would be hooked up to a device and the nurse now would have a central monitoring station that would allow her or him to have visibility of all patients from one location. They cared about their patients. They didn't want to see their patients die from opioid overdose. It not only killed the patient, it scarred a, the whole clinical team. They showed immediately that by monitoring patients in the general ward with our technology, they reduced ICU transfers by over 50%. And we knew what we deployed with Patient Safety Net was seeing those results, not just in one hospital, but repeated. They just completed a 10-year study that, without a doubt, has proven patients that are on our technology don't die from opioid overdose, and patients who are not do. Massimo's technology could do the same thing in the home that it could do in the hospital. There was a strong effort to say, drop the power without dropping the performance. We needed to miniaturize without losing any of the precision of the product. Evolution of microprocessors and memory chips along with our technology have come together now to allow a wearable product with the Massimo set performance. The technology is Massimo set signal extraction technology. So it's the ability to monitor a patient non-invasively through motion and low perfusion. So we create a device that's worn either on the wrist or on the arm, and you can have the same sensing technology for people to wear continuously four days in a row, wherever they are. At home, which we think is the best place for them to be, or in the ICU or the general ward where they're now mobile, they're not tethered. It would be able to monitor you while you go to sleep in the same way that a bedside monitor will, will monitor you. It would an alarm in your home and if you didn't wake up or you didn't, you know, somebody wasn't there with you, it might even, you know, call a friend or it might call 911. That particular version was just waiting for regulatory approvals and things like that throughout the world. And then came COVID-19. In two, three weeks, the product was ready. Thanks to the efforts of my team here, working literally till four, six in the morning. And it was a slightly different version of the product, right? It was for monitoring anybody at home in a, in a way that would allow the hospital to see what's going on. I think the potential for remote patient monitoring is tremendous. I think we have to go there for a lot of different um, disease processes, not just COVID. I think COVID is really accelerating this process and it's a real catalyst to really push it ahead. Um, but there's other chronic medical conditions that would really benefit from this. I think the remote Healthcare got moved by a decade as a result of COVID. We provide the tools for physicians, for patients, for people to really go and live about their lives comfortably.